This video will be a basic tutorial of how to draw molecules in the Avogadro program. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to take uh, my tool settings menu here and click on that. Get a menu that pops up on the left here. I'm going to select on my draw tool there. Click on that. And now I get to select what kind of atom I want to insert whenever I'm drawing now. So I can either select one from this pre-selected list of pretty common atoms here, or I can select other and select anything from the periodic table, like argon, and then I'd have an argon whenever I click and insert my atoms there. But I don't want an argon, so I'm going to go to the selection tool, highlight that, and hit delete. All right, so none of that. All right, go back here. I want a carbon. If I do a single click and I have this adjust hydrogen button off, if I click, then I just get the carbon. So that's all good and fine. If I click and drag, then I get two carbons that are bonded to one another, this link representing a bond there. If I click on, a, on an atom that already exists and then I pull out from there while holding, then I get another atom which is bonded to the one I started on and if I take two existing atoms and I click from one and hold and drag to the other then I can link those two with a bond. Alright so that's all if I have that uh, adjust hydrogens button off but I'm going to select and delete all of these again. Now if I do that with the adjust hydrogens on and I do a single click it's going to fill in hydrogens assuming I want you know full valency there. I can scroll in and scroll out with my center mouse wheel here. So assuming it assumes that I want a full valence octet and it adjusts hydrogens, a single carbon would need four hydrogens. Now if I uh, click and drag with this case going on, then it's going to fill in and give me an ethane. But note that if I keep going and I click and drag, it's going to automatically adjust the number of hydrogens. Notice the one disappeared there. And if I keep going all the way around until I have a circle, a cyclohexane, then it's going to continuously adjust the hydrogens as I go if I have that selected. If I, for example, don't have that selected, or I delete some of my hydrogens and I don't think I have them correct anymore, so if I you know, highlight and delete these, I can fix that by going to Build Add Hydrogens, and it'll add those hydrogens back. If I want to view this at a different angle, I can go to this navigation tool, select that, and then clicking and holding will rotate around in any of these dimensions. I can see just how exceptionally bad these bond lengths are that I've drawn. So I wouldn't want to use this structure as an input to some other type of simulation. I'd want to clean this structure up first. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to this extensions tool and I'm going to go to Optimize Geometry. And so notice that cleaned up a lot of my bond lengths and it kind of cleaned up the structure there. It sort of snapped into a nice kind of chair conformer for my cyclohexane. And that's pretty good, but if I want it to do kind of even better in that cleanup, I can change some of the parameters in this optimization. I can go to Setup Molecular Mechanics Setup Force Field. I can add some more steps to this optimization. Maybe I want to have it as many as, you know, 5,000. I need numbers lock on this keyboard, 5,000. Um, steepest descent, conjugate gradient, your choice. Usually conjugate gradient is faster. Um, I found this number really doesn't matter, but why not? Let's make it a very tiny number. All right, extensions, optimize. Hopefully this works. Hopefully this doesn't crash my program. Avogadro has a tendency to crash quite often, so that didn't seem to run there. Let's see if I try that again after giving it enough time to wait. All right, it seems to be fairly ornery at the moment, not really responding, so I'm going to leave that be, lest I should crash this program. All right, so that's for a cyclohexane. What if I want a molecule with some multiple bonds? So what I could do is change the bond order when I'm drawing. Therefore, I'd get something like, whoa, hang on, come back. There I get something where it already draws double bonds when I go. 
and it's going to adjust to the correct number of hydrogens there in an ethene molecule. But I could delete that. But if I want to change the bond order of existing atoms, then it doesn't really matter what atom I'm on. I could be on any type of atom. But I'm going to kind of zoom in and click on one of these bonds. And then it goes from single to double bond. It adjusted the hydrogens. If I click again, that makes it a triple bond, adjusting hydrogens again. Click it again, and you are back to single bond. Okay, so I want benzene, so I want to alternate single and double bonds. So I click there, click there, click there. And now I'm good to go, um, except for I do not have a planar benzene structure as I want. So I'm going to try to optimize this geometry again. And there it snapped out into kind of a nice uh, conformation there. So that's our nice planar benzene. What if I want to measure some of these uh, bonds, make sure I get the nice uh, bond length, bond angle, all that good stuff going on. So I can use this measurement tool, I believe. Click to measure. Select one of the atoms. It comes up as one. Select the next one. It comes up as two. Shows the distance between the two of them. Go to three. It shows another distance and the bond angle between the three of these, as it indicates there. And I can select fourth, and it'll show the three bond distances and bond angle and what's called a dihedral angle or a torsion angle, which we'll discuss later in this chapter. Okay, so I click off of those, and those go away. All right, now that's all good. What if I wanted a different atom? So if I wanted to draw a different atom to begin with, I could have selected, for example, oxygen. Click on that, and if it's adjusting hydrogens, it's going to adjust the water to give two hydrogen to give two hydrogens there. All right, so that's fine. I can also change existing atoms to different atoms, like for example, if I want to change one of these to a nitrogen, can do that there and it adjusts the hydrogens. If I want to optimize again, I can do that and it kind of shortens those bond lengths a little bit. So I can change those atoms that way that I want. Um, anything else to show here before we go? Um, sometimes if you use one of these special atoms, like um, if I use some type of crazy atom like iron, maybe if I include that, then the force field for the optimization doesn't always work. If I click optimize here, Okay, that worked remarkably well. That was unexpected, and it popped right over that nitrogen. What do you know? Okay, I'm going to use something less likely to work. Let's see. How about we try one of those argons? Let's see if that works. Okay, so it yells at me saying I can't select this force field, blah, 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 switching to UFF. Okay. So I could have avoided that message if I went in my uh, force fields, and usually it's this UFF, this universal force field, which is going to work on pretty much everything. It was this MMFF94 by default. So let's see if this... Now if I click on Optimize, I believe it will not yell at me. And it just continues going on its merry way for the optimization. I can stop this in progress if I want by hitting Cancel. And then hopefully I don't make the Avogadro gods angry and they do not crash the program for me. All right, so I think that is a lot of the basic features of Avogadro. If you have a more advanced question, feel free to ask it in the comments. Otherwise, uh, happy molecule drawing to you.